Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. For Jesus no vos crees. Christos anest. Alithos anest. Amasie kam. Hakin kam. Christe agadegat. Cheshmai agadegat. Christos a inviat. Adiverat a inviat. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Brothers and sisters, we have today this gospel of the blind man. And in so many ways it reminds us of last Sunday's gospel uh, of this the Samaritan woman at the well. Uh, because our Lord uh, is speaking very openly uh, about himself, about his identity, who he is, and he is engaging directly with those whom he meets uh, to reveal himself and also uh, to reveal uh, the extent of his divinity in through these miraculous uh, deeds that he is doing. Uh, we see in the Synoptic Gospels, especially in St. Mark's Gospel, a different uh, aspect of our Lord, where he did not come out so, so, so forcefully, so, so um, explicitly to define himself and, and often uh, you know, did not uh, speak so much about his passion until just before uh, the time when they were going up to Jerusalem. But here in, in St. John's Gospel, uh, we see him being very forthright about uh, who he is revealing uh, his divinity in a very powerful way and therefore provoking, uh, in a sense, this confrontation with uh, the Pharisees. When we think about uh, our own lives as Christians, our own spiritual lives, uh, we are often, uh, you know, we, we, we are often blind to the reality that is going on uh, in our lives, uh, very much like this blind man in the gospel today. Uh, we, we do not really see uh, the circumstances of our lives, and we are lulled into a false sense of complacency uh, because things appear to us to be adequate. They seem to we, we seem to be getting along, as it were, in, in our Christian faith. And uh, part of the problem for us in coming to terms with this spiritual blindness that afflicts us is uh, really understanding what is going on. Uh, so often we judge what is going on in our lives. We determine our spiritual well-being, as it were, a barometer of where we are on the basis of our feelings. Now, this isn't uh, so strange because uh, we are emotional creatures. We have feelings. Uh, we are experiencing our feelings all the time, every day. We get up in the morning and, you know, they say, well, if you get up on the wrong side of the bed, this is a euphemism for being in a bad mood, right? But uh, it's true that uh, our emotions are very, very powerful and very um, volatile, subject to change at a moment's notice. Uh, we can be, uh, we can be uh, in a relatively um, passive state and then something what we consider to be wonderful can happen and we are filled with joy. Uh, we are elated. Uh, the same thing can happen the other way. We can be r relatively peaceful and then because of some circumstance that we didn't anticipate, uh, go into a rage. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the tradition of the church, the fathers have taught consistently over many, many centuries that our emotional life is, 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 is a, actually a stumbling block for us in the Christian uh, path because it will, it, and it is in a sense, it is the very vehicle through which this blindness afflicts us because we are so attuned to it. We are always testing the waters. We are always thinking, am I happy? Am I sad? Am I angry? Am I frustrated? Whatever it might be, we are always aware of this uh, emotional state that accompanies us through the course of our lives. And when it comes to our faith, it's very difficult for us not to uh, assume that our emotions 
are somehow a barometer on what is happening in our spiritual lives, which again, the fathers tell us this is not the case and that we should be wary of that. Uh, in fact, uh, the tradition of prayer in the, in the church that has come down to us for a very long time is precisely to put aside our thoughts, our feelings, our images, uh, our words, emotions, uh, and to stand before God in a kind of abject nakedness, a kind of purity and stepping back from all of the creaturely uh, conditions that uh, we exist in so that we can have um, a moment before him which is characterized more by his nature than, than by ours. Uh, it's passing over from the things that are transient in this world to the things that are eternal and enduring. And so um, the blindness that we uh, struggle with, we'll, we'll ne we will never really get uh, a, a hold up. Uh, we'll never get a grip on it, in a sense, as long as we remain conditioned by our emotional lives and especially thinking that they are somehow a, uh, a, an indication. They are an indication of really not much, uh, not, nothing that is enduring, nothing that is ultimately true, nothing that is permanent will be conveyed to us in this way, but rather the truth, the, object, the absolute truth about God comes to us in a different form and in a different place. It is in that center of our being, the noetic uh, heart of, our, of ourselves, that wherein we can attain to the truth about who God is and the goal that he has for us in our lives. And so uh, this gospel of the blind man, just as the gospel of the Samaritan woman, uh, presents to us uh, this, this uh, question uh, coming after the Holy Pascha. Uh, and it's really a wonderful thing that we have these seasons in the course of the year because uh, that way we, are, we, are, we, we can go from, uh, from fast uh, to feast and then to fast again, uh, realizing that Again, it is not our own emotional um, interpretation of things, but rather it is the church's uh, wisdom and, 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 and the celebrations uh, and feasts that she has established for us uh, to see a greater, a greater aspect of, of, of the truth of God and of our role in the spiritual life, bringing us, in a sense, out of our own isolation and our own confusion and uniting us uh, more closely to the ultimate truth about who Jesus Christ is. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen.